America needs to have a long, hard discussion about how we deal with sexual assault and the allegations that follow. Allegations that too many times come too late. More than 20 women have accused President Trump of sexual assault of one type or another, but he says they're not his type and they're all lying anyway. Several studies say five, maybe 10% of sexual assault allegations aren't true. Trump says all of them against him aren't. What an incredibly unlucky man he is. But Justice Department officials say nearly 80% of all sexual assaults are never reported. And I think that's true because I'm one of the 80%. I was a rape victim when I was 10, and I never told anyone for 53 years. Women don't report, and little boys don't either. It's hard for the typical man or woman who's never been a victim to understand why people don't report. But I think I know why that is, too. We, as a society, have sent the message, you should be ashamed, you should be embarrassed, when in fact, you are only the victim of a crime, nothing more. It is the only crime where the media doesn't identify the victim. Someone slashes your face, cuts off your arm, shoots you in the belly and burns your house to the ground, we put your picture on TV. If you are raped, we will not show you or name you, sending the message you should be ashamed. We should identify the victims. We need to change that message. But there is so much more we need to be doing too, and we need to have that conversation in America now. Wow, Dale, uh, I'm, I'm emotional listening to you. That was very powerful. We are so lucky to have Dale join us right now from Dallas. Uh, Dale, how brave of you to talk about this. Take me back to when you were 10 years old. What happened? Well, it was a young boy who was uh, uh, the son of a rock, tr uh, rock truck driver who was just uh, coming through town. And uh, he talked me into going down to the ballpark, hoping that we would play a little pickup baseball. And uh, then he raped me uh, behind, the, uh, behind home plate. Uh, I'll never forget where it was. I'll never forget how it happened. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily that brave that I speak out about it now or that I did speak out about it eight years ago. I think it would have been braver had I spoken up when I was 10. Uh, but I didn't because I was afraid. And I think even then I knew that I should be ashamed and I should be embarrassed. And I never told anyone. And uh, as a result of that, some other friends of mine were, uh, were attacked and, and hurt as well. Dale, Erica here. Um, it's a pleasure to speak with you again, and every time we speak, I cry. Um, thank you for being so yeah. candid. I mm -hmm. sat at this um, panel and um, told my story, my truth, about being the victim of a sexual assault, and what my um, motivation at the moment was is the fact that we were talking about victims coming forward and not being believed, and I felt like I was a hypocrite if I sat here and pretended like I wasn't affected. What was your motivation for coming forward? Well, I, I came forward because um, uh, I, I was having a glass of wine one night uh, with a friend of mine, a very conservative man, and it was during the Penn State scandal, and he started talking about how he didn't believe any of the kids uh, who were making the allegations uh, against Jerry Sandusky and, and the cover-up at Penn State, because he said to me, not knowing about my own case, that anyone who had ever been assaulted would absolutely come forward, and I'm sitting there knowing for a fact that it doesn't happen that way, and I heard from hundreds of people and the one in particular that breaks my heart every time I think about it um, a, a man wrote me and said I'm 82 years old I was raped when I was 14 I never told anybody but if you're willing to admit what happened to you I'm gonna tell my wife today and I'm gonna call my children and tell them why I was such the bad father and such a bad man my entire life. I want to just know from you, Dale, I take every negative in my life and try to use it as a positive. And I, I want to be clear, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. How has this impacted your life over the years? Uh, the bottom line is I think I, I'm one of the lucky ones. I, I, I really am. Uh, I think two things. One, I was able to deal with it um, easier than, than most people are. And then I think it did develop in me an empathy for assault victims that, that I might not have had. Why do you think so many thousands and thousands of people immediately side with the, with the accused rather than, than with the victims? One of the people here uh, at, at Channel 8 in Dallas in, in management said that the reason the media doesn't identify the victims is because of the shame that's attached to the victims, as you point out, by so many other people on the outside. And, and I, my argument was, you're making my argument that if we're going to stand idly by 
while, while people attack the, the alleged victim, and we're just going to simply cover up the, the crime because we don't want to shame the victim, I think we become complicit in the problem. We appreciate you so much, Dale. We consider you family. We thank you for your story. We thank you for your empathy. And we really do look forward to hearing more from you on Daily Boss Live. Thank you, Dale. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.